Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. Today's project is a nice fun one. We're going to do a dragonfly on a pendant, but I'll also show you something else you can do with the dragonflies later on towards the end of the tutorial. It is actually a really simple one, this, this one. We're doing an incredibly simple cane, which you don't even need a pasta machine for. We're decorating a background with some um, gold coloured corn ears and some grasses and then we're adding a little bit of iridescent to some translucent clay to make the dragonfly wings. You can do it with a Skinner Blend background but you can also do it with just a plain background so this is particularly for anyone who doesn't have a pasta machine. So if you're brand new to polymer clay, if you do not have a pasta machine you can still have fun and create some pendants. Let's start with the equipment we need for today's session. I'll be using a polymer clay blade, I sometimes refer to these as tissue blades, a craft knife, a small roller, not as necessary, but it's handy if you've got one. Something like this, which is um, a cable needle, just something which is going to give you somewhere to sort of press down in a couple of areas. Again, just use whatever you have that will work um, for what you have at home. A cocktail stick. To add a nice shimmer on the dragonfly wings, I'm using some mica powders. This one is an iridescent, which has got a blue tinge and this one is sort of a turquoise colour. Um, if you haven't got any mica powders, then you can of course use old um, shimmery eyeshadow, but obviously one that you finish with, not one that you're carrying on using, but that works really well as well. To make the corn stalks, I'm going to use an extruder um, with a nice thin, very small hold disc. Now I'm very lucky and I have got one of these Lucy Clay extruders. If you can afford these, I would absolutely recommend them. They make life very easy. However, any extruder that you've got will work. We only need a small amount for today's session. And indeed, if you don't have an extruder at all, I will show you how you can simply roll the clay by hand. So obviously do that if you don't have one. When I bake my piece, I'm going to bake it around the outside of a bowl just to give it a nice curved shape. There's lots of other alternate ways you can make curves and I'll put a link both to these bowls and other ways you can make curves in the details below the video description. So have a look if you're interested in that. My template that I'm planning to use is from this set which is number 6 from PC UK Tools. I've had a bit of a resin disaster with my set We'll say no more about that, but luckily, of course, these sets come with the inserts as well. So I've been able to use this as my template, which is the second biggest one from that set. Obviously, use whatever you've got to hand, and you can also just draw yourself up a, t a paper template if you would rather, or do whatever size you want. To finish the wings, I'm just going to do a little layer of varnish. It just protects the mica powder and gives us tiny bit of shine and it's water soluble which is good and obviously just have a paintbrush to put that on after we've um, finished baking and then to make the hole I'm going to drill after baking and then I'm going to add a little bale which has got these sort of pointy bits in so again just to show you because I haven't shown you one of those in my tutorials so far other than that you will definitely need something to work on um, obviously I work on my large tile but I also use the measuring sheet and those of you who are paying attention will spot that I actually use a couple of these, um, but you will only need one. And this is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net. I laminate mine so I can use them several times, and I'm using the one inch one, four squares to one inch, but you can do it in centimetres if you prefer. And again, just to make life easy for you, I have created this template for you. It's a dragonfly template four different sizes of dragonflies that you can use in different projects and I'm using the smallest one, number four for today's but of course having printed this you can always shrink it down to get different sizes and to get smaller sizes. I will use biodegradable wet wipes to clean my hands and equipment as I go although wet cloths work as an alternate and I should use tissues if I need to dry the surface or my hands as well. I will be covering my piece in aluminium foil before I bake it and I will show you how I do that um, as we go through the process so some aluminium foil is very useful and of course I do use a pasta machine both for doing a Skinner blend and for getting a nice thin sheets of clay that I wrap around to create the cane however I've particularly made this design in a way that you do not need a pasta machine if you haven't got one and if you haven't got a pasta machine then simply stack equal layers of playing cards on either side roll over the top and that will give you nice thin sheets of clay although to be honest for what we're doing today you could simply press it by hand and roll it without any playing cards because the design we do for the dragonfly body is so simple you don't need to be exact 
So I think that's it for the equipment. Let's move on to the clay and the amounts we're using for today's project. The clay I'm using today is Fimo Soft, with the exception of the translucent, which is Primo, and I'll come on to that in just a moment. But all recognised brands of polymer clay all work well for this technique. So this is the colours to make the dragonfly. This is for the corn, and this is for the background of our piece. And again, just change the colours up to whatever you want when you're making your own pieces. For the dragonfly, we've got seven grams of the apple green and the peppermint and that's a quarter of an ounce and then because I wanted a slightly softer paler blue than just the brilliant blue I've done equal amounts of the brilliant blue and the white so that's actually about three and a half grams or an eighth of an ounce of each of those and I blend those together to make a nice soft blue colour. For the black this is way more black than we need but it's always easier to have more um, and cut off your pieces than to have too little so for the black I've gone for 14 grams or half an ounce but I say that's way more than we need. For the translucent, it's actually about, again, seven grams, quarter an ounce, about the same as this size, although it looks slightly smaller. Um, and I like the Primo. It just gives a really nice effect. And again, this is the thing, you can chop and change the clays. I use Fimo Soft mainly because I have a lot of it, um, but Primo is equally good. And I like that as well as Cernet and Cato, of course, which I also use in many of my projects. So use whatever you have to hand but the translucent primo is a very good one um, so that's what i'm going to use for today's session and on that i ought to say as well i am going to put this through my pasta machine for those of you who are doing this by hand and rolling by hand this isn't something you need to think about but for those of you who use a pasta machine you do need a really nice clean pasta machine before you put your translucent translucent clay through it so i have cleaned my pasta machine first for anyone unsure about doing that there's loads of videos out there but i did do a quick one myself a couple of months ago on how i clean my pasta machine and i have done that before i put the translucent through and i've ended up with beautifully clear translucent also on that you want as thin a sheet of translucent as you can get so whereas i do the majority of these on setting number three where I do the translucent, once I've got it nice and conditioned, I will put it down to my thinnest possible setting. So for me, that is setting 9. And on my pasta machine, naught is thick and 9 is thin. For me, 9 is lovely and thin and it's thin enough what I'm doing. If your pasta machine doesn't go thin enough, then you can get a couple of A4 sheets of paper. Cut them to the size of your pasta machine. And when you've got your clay as thin as you can get it, sandwich it between the paper. Leave the paper folded open with the, tuck, with the translucent in the middle and then put it in the pasta machine because what will happen is the paper will fold up and go over the clay which will actually rise up as it gets longer as it goes through the pasta machine then quickly remove it from the paper because you don't want it left on the paper because it will leach and the plasticizer will go but that's a way of getting this even thinner and again for those of you who are rolling it by hand just roll it as thin as you can possibly get one playing card thick would be good for the um, thickness we are doing for that today so that's all for the dragonfly for the corn obviously i could have just gone straight gold i haven't done for two reasons one i'm very short of gold polymer clay so i'm eking it out as much as i can um, so i've gone for half of gold and half of white it also gives just a slightly softer paler color which has worked slightly better so i've gone for equal amounts of the gold and the white and i will um, blend those together so again we've got seven grams or quarter of an ounce of each of those and again this is way way more than we need for what we're planning to do but again as with the black it's useful to have have more for what we're doing and then you'll have quite a lot left over for the background i'm actually going to go for a skinner blend but as i mentioned right at the start you do not need to so you can just go for a straight color and again um, as you'll see in the samples i've gone for a straight color in one of them but i'm going to go for brilliant blue but i'm going to add it to a little bit of the cherry red and the black because that gives a lovely aubergine color and i'm going to do that blended down into the white for the background you basically need about two-thirds of an ounce or about 21 grams of clay but I've gone slightly more than this because obviously I've added this piece in so the amounts I've got a third of an ounce of the brilliant blue and the same a third of an ounce of the white or 10 grams of each of those and then as you can see less than three and a half grams so less than an eighth of an ounce of the red and then just a tiny little bit of the black to add in and that'll give us a nice aubergine color I will get them all conditioned properly and I will use the pasta machine for that but of course you can condition them by hand and for anyone unsure about conditioning why we do it or how to do it I do have a tutorial with a video tutorial on that and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one um, as I mentioned I will get them all conditioned on setting number three apart from the translucent which will go on setting number nine and I'll bring you back 
and we'll start off doing the background colour and a blend between these two. We'll start with the background for the piece and this is the mix of the blue, the red and the black which gives this lovely sort of aubergine colour and obviously slightly less of the white. As I mentioned at the start, you don't have to do a Skinner blend but for anyone who does want to do one, I'm going to do a very straightforward one just by doing the diagonal line across and then putting the two pieces together. If you're new to Skinner blends or aren't sure how to do them then I do have a video with some tips and techniques and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So I'm just going to put them together on the diagonal, fold them in two, pinch the folds to give myself a head start and put that through on setting two of the pasta machine because although these were conditioned on setting three I now have four layers so I'm going to put it up to a setting thicker. Put it through that way, keep folding forwards and back till I get a nice blend across the piece with dark at one side and light to the other and when I'm doing it I'm keeping in mind the size of the template I want to use and I want this to be just fractionally wider and I'll bring you back when I've got that done. So here we go, here's the blend complete. Now I'm going to keep it at that setting number two because that makes a nice thick pendant. However, of course, you could make it thinner if you want because where the wings extend, we've actually got the layer of clay of those as well. So it's completely up to you. But you want it to be big enough to take your template and also to be able to have a few spaces off the side where the wings and the corn can protrude out the outside of the pendant. So having got that roughly in place, I'm going to very lightly just mark with a cocktail stick around the outside and that's just to give me an idea of where to place my corn and where to place my dragonfly when I'm making the pendant. Because I'm working on the measuring sheet you can just flip and the template comes away easily. So here's the gold mix that was the mixture of the gold and the white and as you can see it just comes out just slightly lighter which is a better colour mix for the project we're doing today. I've already taken off a little piece of this, not much, probably about that much. and put it inside the extruder and extruded it using this um, very small disc with the small holes and got myself some extruded um, strings that we can use for the corn stalks. However, if you don't have an extruder, you can just roll them by hand. So I'd take a small piece and just roll it out until it gets to the size you want. And what I do is when I roll, I'm rolling and spreading my fingers. But as you can see, the corn stalks are really quite thin, so you'd need to sort of go quite thin which can take a little bit of practice, which is never a bad thing, getting practiced. But as you can see, you can just roll it by hand if you would rather. But seeing as I've got these, I'm just going to take some of the corn stalks. Now I'm just going to give the extruded clay just a little roll, because it sometimes comes out slightly um, wibbly wobbly. And then I'm going to put it within my circle, or within my template area, but do it so that it's short of going out the side, because we're going to add the ears of corn on the top. And I'm going to do five pieces, and so I'm going to lay them on, and then I can see where they come out at the side of my piece, so I can just nip that off. So let's do one, let's do one going this way. And I'm just very gently pressing them on with my finger, and you don't need very long lengths either, so as you can see we haven't got far to go with these. Each time I've done this I've put them in different places so uh, just do whatever you want to do. Let's have one going up towards the top and coming down. Okay so there are the five pieces. I'll put those extruded pieces on one side because I might use them if I'm going to do another pendant and then I will get, so the, so the chunk I used here, we will put it back into a roll and we're going to roll ourselves a long sausage or snake and it wants to be about half the width of one of these squares so about an eighth of an inch or probably about a quarter of a centimetre. And this is the easiest way I find of sort of taking pieces off that are roughly the same size. Now it does only need to be roughly the same size so don't you don't need to be too careful about this and don't need to worry about it. 
So having got this rolled down to the right size, I'm just going to cut off quite small pieces. And I'm going to do nine per cornstalk. And you might notice a little bit of mess on here because I did this already, but I'd made them a bit too big. So what I then did is I very gently pulled them off and then just wiped gently over the clay with a wet wipe to remove the area of mess. So if you find the same, that you put your first one on and you think it's too um, big or too small, you can remove them. So what I'm doing with these is I'm just rolling them into a ball and then rolling them slightly longer. So they sort of come out slightly sort of... Uh, oblongy type shapes. Doesn't matter if some of them are slightly different sizes because you'll never find all the pieces in an ear of corn exactly the same so don't overthink it. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the largest pieces we've got and we're just going to put them on the top of our corn, ear, corn stalk angled slightly out back slightly shorter. Okay. And you just layer them up, sort of zigzagging them up as they go. And then usually end up with a small single piece coming off the top. And just to finish them off with the blunt tip of my craft knife, so not the sharp side, the blunt side, I'm just going to anchor these into the clay just by going from the midpoint of the ear and going towards where the stalk is. And it helps give a little bit of texture and I say anchors them into the clay below. And that's all you need to do for each of your stalks. So I will go through that and I'll bring you back when I've done the rest and I'll keep going on and you'll see when I've come back some of them will go slightly out of our piece just to give you a little bit of added interest. So there's the ears finished and as you can hopefully see they go slightly outside of the line of our template in a couple of places. So next thing to do is to do a little sort of grass or the leaves at the bottom. So for this we're going to take the rest of our piece of clay and now mine's already the right height so I don't want it more than about there really but I'm going to put it through that way on on my thinnest usable setting. So for me that is setting nine and I get myself a nice long thin strip. So I'm going to press it down just so it's nice and flat on my working sheet. I'm going to cut off any areas that are messy because we don't need very much. And that's the reason I'm going to press it down because if you start cutting through it and it's a thin sheet you'll find that it pulls towards you. So all I'm going to do is just fairly randomly cut myself some areas or sort of leafy type colours. I tend to do these in sets of three just because it makes life easier. But we're going to bend these a fair bit as they go on the piece and obviously separate them out. So don't overthink it too much because you can change the shapes of it. Have some coming that way. Say so we don't need too many. I'll just have a couple of small ones in here as well. It's always good to have some small ones to cover up some areas at the front. And then we'll take that away. And obviously if you want any more you can always put that back through the pasta machine or just roll it really thinly depending on what you are doing. And then I will normally just pull these apart before I start putting them on. just makes life easier when you're picking them up. Because with them being so fine they tend to stick easily. And then I'll just start layering them on. So I'll probably start with a piece sort of towards the middle. Very gently just press it on, trying not to leave too much in the way of fingerprints. Now wherever it goes over where my template line is, I will just score with the back of my um, craft knife very gently, slightly wide, so that I will have a rough idea still where to cut out when I go around. And then also again just to sit this down very gently with my craft knife, again 
the blunt side, so not the sharp side, going through and just scoring in the middle. And just continue going on, adding grasses. As, was, as I mentioned, you can pull around, so I can actually twist that one all the way around there, even though he wasn't actually cut in that direction. Do that slight line again there. And just press round. And I'll carry adding them in to create the grasses underneath. Now before the dragonfly goes on, I will just put my template roughly back in place and just give myself more of an idea as to where to cut when we get to do that later on. So that's the piece done with all the grasses and as I mentioned you have a lot of leftover clay but it's easier to have too much there other than to have too little and in actual fact that would make a very nice pendant just as it is if you wanted to do that so you could stop at that point but of course this is about the dragonfly so we will go on to making that cane so i'll move on to the dragonfly which is actually pretty simple now those of you who are used to polymer clay you could do a skinner blend between these three colors but i'm working on the basis this is going to be a nice easy one so even if you haven't got a, a pasta machine um, you can do this so because of that I have conditioned all of the clay thoroughly and I have put it through setting number three of my pasta machine but you could have just rolled this, conditioned it by hand and just rolled it um, to a thickness instead. I'm going to take the green one because that's going to be our, our main centre colour and create a little sort of stub-ended sausage. You saw there I just pressed it on the ground. I'm going to fold the peppermint or the turquoise colour clay, make it to roughly the right length that's my um, sausages and then I'm going to put this through the pasta machine so it becomes a width that I can get to go all the way around the outside so I'll start it on setting number one seeing if that's big enough and yes it is which is great so I'm just going to wrap that all the way around I'm not worried about the ragged edges I'll just take off the excess and I'm going to do the same with the blue so put that up make it the same size, put it back through the pasta machine that way or roll it by hand if you don't have a pasta machine so that's not quite big enough so I'll do one setting lower that's fine and if you've got an area that isn't quite meeting you can just tear a bit off and patch it in okay so that's our main cane let's say if you were doing a Skinner blend then you'd have simply done it to roll from the green end round to the lighter blue and then we're just going to cover that in a thin setting of black so I'm going to chop off a piece that's the same width if I was rolling by hand I would then roll it that way to make it longer but I want it nice and thin so I'm going to put it through my thinnest setting which is number nine that way on to give myself a nice thin layer that I can coat around the outside of the blue there we go and then just wrap that around you can see where it overlaps so take off the excess although we don't need to be too worried about that all the minor details and all the minor differences from this end to this end you really will not see in this cane and it'll just add an extra something to your dra dragonfly so please do not worry about this one whatsoever it does not have to be neat it does not have to be exact so I'm just going to roll this a little bit because what I want to do is I want to chop off just a wee little bit from the end I'm going to keep this to one side because that's going to be our dragonfly eyes and the rest of this we're going to make into the cane for the body and the tail so first thing we're going to do is I'm just squeezing it with my fingers slightly pressing in what we call reducing the cane and then when it gets to a slightly longer length we can give it a bit of a roll and I'm going to do this in measurements simply because it's easier when you're following a tutorial so I've rolled this till it's about four inches in length I'm going to chop off 
an inch and a half and if you're working in centimetres I'd probably say do 12 centimetres and chop off probably four and we're just going to reshape this first piece so I'm going to work so it's flat on my tile and with my fingers I'm just pressing down on the top side so we're going to round it off into a nice sort of semi domed shape so pressing down and then rounding off to end up with a shape sort of like that Okay, with this next bit we're going to roll it again till it's about the same well actually slightly shorter so let's do this one till it's about three or just over three inches so three and a half inches so that would be about eight centimeters and chop off a piece that's an inch and a half or about four centimeters and this one's going to be same again but wider and thinner so this time when I press it flat I'm really going to press down hard with my fingers and hold on to that end so it doesn't spread too much. I'm going to flatten it off by pressing it down and push down the sides. So we've got a longer, flatter piece than our first piece. This last piece we're going to go to it's about three inches or about eight centimeters. If it's too big you can just push it slightly smaller and once you've got it to the roughly the right size we're going to make this one into a triangle so all I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch my thumb and finger and work along the edge the whole length squashing it down into a triangle and then just cut into two even parts so probably about there okay and then we're going to put our pieces together so the first one we're going to do is we're going to do our thicker our sort of wider circular end we're going to go and find the bit of black we've got left over so this was still through on setting number three so sort of a medium setting of my pasta machine it's probably a couple of millimeters thick and I'm going to cut a piece that would effectively sit on the bottom of our piece but I'm actually going to lay it centrally across the top and just let that fold over the two small triangles are going to sit either side of that and then we're going to get another piece of black that's going to sit in between those so you can actually push it down if you want to turn it on the other side cut off the excess so I've just got that layer of black on there and this piece sits upside down on top and that is effectively our dragonfly cane that's all we need to do to create both the body and the tail of the dragonfly and then we're just going to use this one piece to create all the detail so at the moment it's sort of a weird sort of oblongy shape but what I'm going to do is with my fingers I'm just going to press turning it on its side and pressing in so it'll end up a more of a square shape and I'm reducing this again just by pushing in with my fingers which automatically makes it longer first thing we're going to do is we're going to chop off a piece which will keep to one side for the body and then the rest of it we're going to carry on doing this until we get enough to make all the parts of the dragonfly tail Get it to it's about four inches or about 10 centimeters. And then we'll chop off one inch or about two and a half centimeters. Put the other bit to one side for a minute. Now this bit's going to be the body. So all we're going to do is we're going to reduce it again. So it's about twice the length. And I'm just going to chop off the messy bit on the end that's the bit where it becomes slightly distorted so I want this to it's about two inches or about five centimeters in length just 
just roughly. So that'll do. Chop down the middle. And it's up to you how you put the bits together um, to create the body. I think I'll go with a slightly larger bit in the middle this time. Put those two bits together. And now you can find the template that you're using. And as I mentioned, I'm using template number four from the freely downloadable one on my website. And I'm already roughly the right height. So I just need to change the shape to a slightly more rounded shape. And by that, I'm just using my fingers to press around the corners. Put it up and see, I'm not far off. So at this stage, I will normally chop a piece off just to see how well it's fitting in. And that's a pretty good size. So I'm happy with that. So that's the main part of the dragonfly body done. So I'll put that piece to one side and we'll go back to the piece we've got left. And what we want to do now is to get six pieces from this. So I'm going to go to six inches, um, which would be about 15 centimeters, but use whichever calculation you want. I don't want the distorted bit on the end, so I'll chop that off when it gets smaller but I want this long enough that I can take six pieces from it. Once I start getting close to six, what you can do if you want to, is you can make one end tapered slightly. So I'm going to taper this end so this end becomes thinner as I work. And then that can be the bottom end of the tail, which gets slightly thinner. As you can see, I've done it there so that I've got the distortion well past my side. So we have got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So I'll then just chop them off. And it's just a case of putting them together. Um, in such a way so that they either mirror or match whichever way up you want to put it. So I'm going to go that way. And you just lay them on top of each other. So it really doesn't matter which way you put them together. But effectively, that's going to be the main part of our dragonfly. And again, as you can see, we can then use the template. Now at the moment it's way too big, but that's fine. When you're reducing one of these, I would tend to put it on its side and start from the top and just pull. So I'm pulling it very gently towards the outside. Because what happens, and then turn it on the other end and do the same, is that there is a tendency for it automatically to get shorter as you are doing that. Now, as you can see from the template, we can taper the top and the bottom, so don't worry if you're pressing more at the top than you are on the middle part, but we will just carry on doing that until we get it to the right size. Just keep looking, it's a bit further to go yet. Again, there's no pressure, no hurry about doing this, just take your time. And as you can see, you're going to have enough here to do several dragonflies. You can also pick it up and sort of push it smaller. So I'm pushing inwards when I'm doing this, which automatically makes it longer. Keep checking, a bit further to go yet. You can also, if you want to, with a nice clean rolling pin, just give it a little bit of a roll if that helps as well, just to extend it. So it's still a bit wide, so now I'm pressing it in that way again to make it shorter. And of course, when you're making this, if you were going to make them lots of different sizes, I could have left some of it the larger size to make the, one of the bigger dragonflies. So just use the templates however you want to. I'm just going to cut that piece off just to see how we're doing. I don't think we're far off now. I'm actually thinking that that's, I'm quite happy with that. I don't mind if it's just slightly longer than the piece. So great, so we've got our body. We've got our tail that's going to sit on that. 
So the next thing we need to do are the eyes. And again, I will use the template for the size. Now we've got this piece that I cut off right at the start. Now if we very carefully just start pressing it inwards with our thumbs and our fingers, we will get to a stage where we can turn it on its side. And again, just pressing in. You will get distortion, but we need such a small amount and it's such a small roll that we'll be able to get enough to get several pairs of eyes out of this. So once it's down to a size where you can start rolling it easily, then just do that. So what I'm doing is I'm rolling and spreading with my fingers. I will take it off and have a look at some stage, so we're too big at the moment. And again, if you were doing several different dragonflies, then I'd keep one part big and do one part small. Let's see how we're doing now. Let's cut off a piece. Yeah, that's, that's about spot on. So I've got all my pieces for the dragonfly, apart from the wings, but we'll put the wings on afterwards. So, let's start constructing the dragonfly bodies. First thing I'm going to do is to cut a piece off this. And whatever size or whatever thickness I cut this, then I'll need to do the same thickness for the body and the eyes. And I'm going to decide which bit's going towards the body and which bit's going to be the tail. So this bit's going to be the tail, so I'm just going to press that slightly in even more. And the bit that's going to the body can be flattened, so I've just used the tip of my nail there. So I'm going to cut off the same thickness slice for the body. And again, it tapers down slightly towards the tail. So that can sit on there like that. And I'll then use the cable needle just to join those two together. And then I go down, go around, and I'm just going to use it to contour around the sides. So I'm going to push those into a taper. And then everywhere I joined a piece, I'm just going to press slightly in. So you can see wherever those black lines are. To go down one side and then do the same, go back up the other. And it just gives a little bit more, I don't know, interest to the body. And then having done that with the tip of it, I can just roll over and almost create the segments to the dragonfly. We're going to take Two little rolls to be his eyes. Again, same thickness. And they literally just sit on the top, off to one side. And again, give that a slight roll with a cable needle. And then just to add a tiny little bit for the mouth, I take a little bit of that light gold colour we've already made. it into sort of roughly the same sort of shape as we did for the corners and that just sits on the top. The very last thing we need to do is to um, put the little bit of the end of the tail so again I'm just going to take a tiny bit of black, roll it into a ball, that's probably too big you get used to by eye sort of seeing what size. Just add that on the bottom. With my craft knife, I'm just going to flatten the sides slightly, make it more of a wedge shape. And then with the craft knife, you just cut down to create the little flap on the end of the tail. And our dragonfly is now ready to go onto our piece. And we put it on before we do the wings. So gently take him off your measuring sheet or whatever else you're using and decide where you're going to place him. So I'm going to put him quite up towards the top and I'm aware when I'm doing this of where my wings are going to go. And I could have got a, a rounded shape piece. I quite like to put a little bit of a, a twist on the dragonfly so he's swirling out to one side. And having placed him on, if you're happy with where he is, you can just and all those grooves, just press him slightly down so he's attached to 
the bottom clay and then the taily bit I push over. Okay, so there's our dragonfly body. So the very last thing we need to do are the wings. The wings are very simple. I've cut them out from the template and all we're going to do is to cut two of the top wings and two of the bottom wings. And again, you've got much more translucent here than you need just to do the set of wings, but it's easier to um, condition and to do slightly more. And obviously you might want to make more than one of these. I'm just going to carefully cut round the templates with a craft knife. Obviously flip them over to do the other side. And then going to remove all the excess clay and hopefully leave our four wings in situ. There we go. Put that on one side carefully because we can use that for another project. And then to add some shimmer to our piece, I'm going to use the mica powders. So this one is like the iridescent and I've marked on it that it's the bluish one and obviously just use whatever you've got. If you don't have any mica powders, then um, eyeshadow can be a nice alternate and what I'm going to do is put some on my finger you can see there the lovely sort of purpley iridescence it's got and I'm just rubbing it on the top now I'm rubbing it backwards and forwards in the direction that the wing goes so to speak because it will mark and make tiny little scratch marks in your clay so therefore do it in the direction that the wing pattern would go rather than across so I've added quite a bit because I like a nice a nice shine on the wings there. And then I've kept these slightly far apart because I then like to go in with a slightly darker blue and just along the top line just give a little bit of extra dark blue. Now you could of course do this with a, a brush rather than your finger. And of course if you're using a lot of mica powders you should definitely be wearing a mask but I'm not using much at all today so uh, I'm okay and I will make sure I get rid of any excess powder straight away so there's no chance of me breathing it in and then carefully remove them from the sheet and then we'll go back to working on our piece so making sure there's no excess mica powder anywhere I will very gently lay the pieces on so they go from the body, just on the edge of the body, out to one side. I'm just putting them on gently to start with so that I can take them off and change their position if I need to. It's not always easy to tell where they're going to go over the corn ears until you put them on. So if you don't like their positioning, you can just take them off and change it slightly. Or you can either have them where the wings are quite well spaced, so there's a big gap between them, or have them so that they're quite high up together. And again, it's, it depends on the corn positioning, how you want it to look. So just have a think when you're doing that, yours where you want to put it. And I know it's covered over a lot of the corn, but I'm actually okay with that. So I'm just going to gently press down with my finger, making sure I'm only pressing on the wings, so I'm not transferring any of the mica powder onto the rest of it. And then I'm going to add a little vein work, just to add a bit more dimension. Now, on the ones I drew on the template, I've gone quite detailed, but when I've done it in real life, I've actually done less detail than that. But I do, with again, with the blunt side of the craft knife, a little channel... So I'm not pressing all the way through, I'm just marking a channel and then a thinner one in towards the top and then three curved lines going out and away and I do that on each wing.
So you can see there, it just adds a little something with the iridescence, so you can see the, uh, the lines in the wings. And then I just rub, roll them slightly more into the body. And then just to make sure they're nicely pressed in, I just do a couple of little indents in. And that is effectively our pendant finished. So we need, all we need to do now is to chop it out. So when I do this, there is a technique I use, because what I want to do is I want to go in at a slight angle, angling away from my piece. So I'm not cutting down straight. Let me do an example here for you. So I'm not cutting down straight, I'm cutting at an angle. So if you can see that. So that it's then going to have None of the outside clay is going to show, so I'm going to have the clay below the wings which will protect them and keep them steady, but it shouldn't show on the un when you look at it from the top. And I start by doing the wings. So I'm going to start from where I can see that line going around the outside and cut round. And the same here. And I'll generally bring the craft knife right out to the outside as well, because that helps when we're pulling the clay away. I think I might have gone off shot a couple of times there. That's because I'm so short-sighted these days. I need to bring it close to me. Um, but you should then hopefully be able to gently take all the clay pieces away and leave your design. If you can see any pieces that just need to be taken off, you can do them now. And then you should with the underneath of your blade, just to be able to gently pull the design off. And now you can go and really sort of neaten in. So with your fingers, make sure that any of the corn ears are nicely covered. Same with the wings. Make sure the underneath clay is nicely pressed down. And your piece is now ready to bake. I'm going to work on the basis I'm going to drill a hole afterwards for this one just because I haven't done that many times on my video just to show you how to do that but of course you could put the hole in at this stage or whatever you want to do with your pendant you could add a bale to the back loads of different ways of doing this and loads of different ideas so just choose whichever one you want to use for your particular design I'm going to bake mine on the outside of a bowl just to give it a nice extra curve and all I'm going to do is very gently press him down I get a nice curve. Try to make sure there's no fingerprints on it, of course, at the same time. I will then get a piece of foil and I will show you how I wrap it, but I will take the sound down because I know a lot of people don't like the sound of foil. Um, but I will wrap it so the foil goes underneath quite a lot proud and then I'll bring it up here so that the fresh piece of foil is in no way touching my um, piece but then wrap it round the outside and that's how I will bake it and I will bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay I am using so you do the same for yours. So you can see there, I've wrapped it so that it's not touching the front at all and that just helps protect the clay should the oven spike at any point during baking. So I'll bring you back and we'll do the finishing touches once that's finished curing. So here's our piece out of the oven and you can see that lovely iridescence on the wings. I let it cool and just added a single layer of the Fimo gloss varnish but it's the one which is water soluble and that just really brings out um, the shine and protects the mica powder and because the wings are shiny and now iridescent compared to the rest they really sharp beautifully so that's it 
Not a lot else we need to do on the back. You could varnish the back as well if you wanted and sort of sand around the sides just to make a nice finish. But what I am going to do is put a little hole in so we can put the bale in the top. So being mindful where the head is and obviously mindful where the top part is, I'm going to go as high up as I can in order to get the hole in. So I'm going to go about there and I'm going to go down at a slight angle so I'm going through. Now obviously I am aiming towards my finger at the moment but I'm going very slowly with very little pressure so I will feel the second it's starting to come through. Obviously I would never do this with a drill bit that was electrified in any way because I don't want to um, hurt my finger and I'll be able to feel the second it gets close And then we have a lovely small hole ready to add our bale in. Just fits over and those little pins with the right size to add on. And then the back closes up in the same hole. And there the bale is attached. And all I need to do now is add a chain and our piece is complete. As normal, I have a couple of other colour options for you. So I'll just go through those. Dragonfly is the same on all of them and the corns the same on these two except the corn stalks were a slightly darker so they were actual gold which I had left over from when I did something else which I'll show you in just a moment so you can see they've got slightly darker stalks on these two than the actual um, grass in the um, foreground and this one has got silver corn and silver grasses. The background for this one was a light shade of brilliant blue so I'd actually mixed the blue brilliant blue with the white again in the same way as we did to do the blue on the inside of the dragonfly body and then I've done the Skinner blend from that down to the white. This one is actually a very dark blue. I didn't have any Windsor blue left so I mixed three parts of brilliant blue to one part black to give myself a lovely dark midnight blue and again that went down to white. And this one is just completely plain and it's again that very dark midnight blue but the whole of the plain colour in one piece. So those are some other colour options for you. And just for another example of something you can do with this design, these are tin cans which I've covered to make pot holders or pen holders or desk tidies, something like that. And again, you can use the dragonflies. This one has just got plain dark sort of aubergine, even darker than the colour I made as the background. Um, I've got a blue um, dragonfly on this one, exactly the same cane, but made up with brilliant blue and turquoise, which I found a bit too dark for the design, which is why I swapped over to the greens. And this one is done with the same um, light sky down to white background that I showed you in one of the pendants, with our normal green dragonfly and the same iridescent wings. And I was just experimenting with the colour of the corn and the um, grasses in here. And this is actually a mixture of sunflower yellow and a little bit of bronze. So again, if you don't have any gold, which this is just the pure gold, then you can always experiment with other colours to find out something else to do. And they make quite fun pot holders. This is the large size one, um, if you're wanting to do that from the template. So there we go. That was the Dragonfly Pendant Tutorial in polymer clay, showing you how to get some dragonflies with some lovely iridescent wings and a very simple cane for the body. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, thank you so much for watching and a particular thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. This one's great fun. I hope you have fun making some things of your own with it. And hopefully I'll see you next time for my next tutorial. Bye for now. Bye.